Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here. I am in desperate need of a haircut, but that's not what this video is about today. Today I want to talk about the recent Iron Man virtual reality delay, the indefinite delay I should say, and I want to ask the question, did this delay need to happen? So let's just jump right in. So I'm sure you've already heard this all by now, but just in case you didn't, a couple of days ago, Sony made the announcement. Unfortunately, they had to indefinitely delay both The Last of Us Part 2, huge title for them, and Iron Man VR, also a big title, but in a different way. Now this is, of course, due to the current coronavirus plague currently ravaging the globe as I speak. But ever since that announcement went live, there's been a lot of people out there saying, well, did this really need to happen? We have digital, especially with VR. A lot of people are buying their games digitally. Couldn't they have just released it digital and made the people who buy physical ways for whenever that version eventually drops? And of course, physical wouldn't be impacted by logistical issues like shipping, printing discs, and getting things to stores all over the world, you know? But looking at it from Sony's point of view, I think it does make sense. I mean, looking at The Last of Us Part 2, The Last of Us Part 2 is going to be an absolutely huge system seller for the PS4. Even in its la like this final stage of its life, it's still going to move a lot of units. That game is huge. But then on the PSVR side of things, Iron Man is probably like the most high caliber profile game that they have coming out on PSVR, maybe even until PSVR 2. There's certainly been nothing announced so far that can match that level of, you know, hype that Iron Man VR has on the PS VR. So even though most of the people, like myself, maybe yourself included, who already own the PS VR, buy their games mostly digital because it's such a pain in the ass to swap discs and take off the headset anytime you want to swap a game. You have to keep in mind that there's so many people out there who don't have a PS VR headset yet and they've been looking at Iron Man. They've been thinking, you know, I'm going to buy Iron Man. I'm going to buy a headset. There, there might even be a bundle. There should be a bundle. I'd be surprised if there's not an Iron Man bundle with the headset from Sony's side of things. But Iron Man VR would definitely move at, at least some significant amount of headsets off the shelves. But if you release Iron Man VR first digitally, maybe even months because we don't know how long this is going to last it's indefinite after all before the physical version all of a sudden that impact gets lessened considerably so maybe those people who would have bought the headset day one all of a sudden they've had all these months to look at the reviews they've been watching playthroughs from streamers on youtube and twitch whatever and of course with such a significant amount of time passes people just forget these things you have to keep in mind iron man vr is going to be targeted at the casuals not like people like you and me who are into us who are like enthusiasts these are people who are going to be like, oh cool, Iron Man, I've seen Iron I know Tony Stark because the 2008's, you know, Marvel movies, Robert Downey Jr., you know? So all of a sudden, all those potential casual sales could be impacted by, you know, a staggered release like that. Now there is also a couple of other considerations that could have went into this decision that Sony have made, including the fact that they wouldn't want spoilers to be spread around, because there's people out there who can only buy physical for whatever reason they're unable to download or maybe they just don't want to and it's not fair on them that they have to worry about spoilers and stuff like that from people who bought the game digitally day one not to mention because of this crazy you know situation that the world is in right now a lot of people who maybe would have bought iron man vr day one no problem they've been laid off you know they don't have a job anymore they're completely financially unstable now if they were going to buy us before all of a sudden they need their money for the essentials the foods you know the pay rent pay the bills, all that kind of stuff. So those are sales that are gone now as well, so it might make more sense for Sony to just wait a few months, however long this is going to take, for things to return to at least some kind of normality uh, so that they can have the biggest impact financially. Because at the end of the day, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, these big publishers, they're not charities, they have bottom lines, they have a lot of overhead, they have targets that they need to hit, they have shareholders that they need to keep happy. So as much as it pains me to have to wait for Iron Man viewer even longer, and The Last of Us Part 2 as well, because you know, I love that, even though it's flat, I absolutely love the first game, cannot wait for the second one, I'm actually more bummed out about The Last of Us 2 if I'm being honest. Regardless, I can see where they're coming from, I understand it. With all that said, I think us as PS viewer owners might come out of this, you know, relatively unscathed compared to the flat gaming. I mean, most PS viewer games don't even get physical releases, at least not at the same time as like day one, if you know what I mean physical release can come a few months later and in many cases that's often what happens so i wouldn't expect any more indefinite delays over on the ps viewer side of things thanks to the coronavirus maybe some smaller delays like with gorn whatever from people having to work at home but i don't think we'll see any more indefinite delays for ps viewer titles unlike flat gaming where i think you know ghost of tsushima cyberpunk you know halo infinite whatever nintendo's working on this year those games are all 
high risk of getting that dreaded indefinite label, in my opinion, to say nothing of the next gen consoles themselves. So maybe this situation will overall work out for those, you know, digital only titles like so many of the PSVR titles are. And you know indies in general because all of a sudden there's no none of this triple a competition you know it's all the path is going to be cleared for all these games to sell a lot more than maybe they normally would of course i can't say that for sure everything is up in the air right now who knows how long this coronavirus stuff is going to last is it going to be weeks is it going to be more months could it be a year i don't know nobody really does but anyway that's my two cents on why i think the iron man vr delay is probably the right decision for sony to have made even though it hurts us all deeply inside. So before I end this video, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, I'm able to devote more of my time to the channel, which is great. And let me give a big shout out to the top tier of Patreon supporters, Tradition, Columbus Thomas III, Crum, and Pete Hawkins. Thank you very much for your exceptional generosity, lads. I really do appreciate that. It is a huge help to the channel. If you'd like to support the Patreon, the link will be in the description, but if not, don't worry, I'll be happy with, you know, just the likes, uh, subscribes, sharing the video where people you know, might be interested in seeing us, stuff like that, be a huge help too. And finally, let me give a huge shout out to Decepticon for continuously letting me to use all his music in these videos, so if you want to check him out over on Decepticon.com or Spotify or whatever it is you use to listen to music, you're probably going to find him there. I'll see you lads and ladies in the next one. Bye for now.